My name is uh, Dr. Amjad. I'm one of the retina specialists. And we are, we've got uh, Dr. Hamid Bhatt here as a chairperson for this session, and uh, Dr. Khaled Khaled Tagur, I'm very sorry, sir, as a co chair. Um, so I think it's nine, uh, 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 nine o'clock now. We, we, are we okay to start, sir? So our first presenter is Dr. Hina. Uh, she'll be presenting on the immune mediated response after the cataract surgery. So here you go. Thank you. Thank you. As alaikum. OSP for the chance of uh, presenting and uh, sharing these very interesting cases. Um, as always, it's an honor to be here and to be presenting and, you know, eventually you learn the most. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing a couple of cases that presented to our clinic because I run a, a uveitis slash ocular inflammatory slash medical retina clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and these cases were actually referred to me by FACO surgeons. Uh, because of prolonged inflammation post FACO. And you tend to kind of overlook these because FACO is so hoary and it's such a safe procedure and so sophisticated that, you know, it kind of falls off from the back of your mind that the severity can be pretty intense uh, of these immune mediated responses. So, uh, case number one uh, was a 60 year old healthy male underwent uneventful cataract surgery. Um, and uh, in the left eye, and there was no history of prior ocular systemic diseases or surgical procedures. On the post-operative review on day seven, he was asymptomatic, but he was only complaining of the fact that I have an angry looking eye. So the redness in my eye has not really disappeared and I don't like it because everybody's you know, com complaining and, and, and uh, noticing that. But he did not report any pain. His vision was 2020 partial, day seven pupil. You know, it was a good uh, result for, as far as the FACO procedure was concerned. But there was a diffuse conjunctival and episcleral congestion, uh, and which blanched on topical epinephrine. So it was not extending till the sclera. It was a diffuse sort of episcleritis, in, and it was temporal extending supra, from the supratemporal site to the temporal site. The anterior chamber was free from any inflammation and uh, the IOL was nicely placed in the bag. He was asked not to taper his topical steroids already prescribed and he was asked the before picture, which is something that you don't expect after an un uneventful clear corneal incision. Um, the eye was slightly more inflamed than it seemed like and after prolonged sort of uh, steroid intensive steroid therapy, they improved. So this was one of the milder spectrum of uh, you know, a slightly prolonged episcleritis developing after uneventful phaco surgery, for which case you don't always automatically go towards tapering the steroid. Some eyes need the topical steroid for a longer period of time. So case number two, a 70 year old made a patient presented with a history of diabetes and hypertension and obviously cataract and under, underwent uneventful cataract surgery within my center. So I can vouch for the surgeon, he was a very good surgeon. There are no prior histories of ocular disease or procedures. Now, still post seven days of phaco surgery, he started to suffer from discomfort. Now, after seven days, and then mild redness in the affected eye, associated with periorbital edema, and then he had ptosis, and this, all of this started to get worse day by day, hour by hour, and obviously he had uh, undergone femtophaco procedure, so he was very apprehensive. After two more days, um, he developed a diffuse redness in his eye, Conjunctival congestion, episcleral congestion, and, and not even blanching with epinephrine. So there was a scleral component to it as well. <coughs> Again, he was asked to continue topical steroid to our lip, judged by our previous experience, and we were hoping that that will be done. But post 14 days, the discomfort worsened. Now we were looking at a diffuse uh, episcleritis, and along with a component of scleritis, and um, he was very, very apprehensive, because instead of getting better, he was getting worse. So on examination, he had hyperemia, severe late edema, causing mechanical ptosis, uh, diffuse congestion, no blanching with topical epinephrine. Cornea was clear. Again, no cells were found in the AC or flare. So there was no infective or intraocular inflammation. It was just the ocular surface that was involved. So a diagnosis of diffuse anterior scleritis was made. No infective etiology was deciphered. We did conjunctival swabs. They came out negative. And uh, intraocular, there was no sign of inflammation. So he was asked to continue the steroid um, instead of tapering. And post 17 days, the discomfort worsened. It was not alleviated. So oral flurbiprofen was added to the regimen. 
After 18 days, he started to complain of redness and discomfort in the other eye as well and came up with bilateral periorbital edema and bilateral redness and worsening edema and there was still no evidence of intraocular inflammation. At that point we realized that there's not just a prolonged mild episcleritis, there's an autoimmune mediated response that is now beginning to involve the other eye as well. So at this point, 18 days post-surgery, we added topical immune suppression in the form of restasis, 0.5 milligram per mil. Topical drops, we asked him to take those twice a day in both eyes, and I referred him to a rheumatologist for prompt systemic immune suppression. So this was his eye, uh, and after topical immune suppression therapy, he started to improve after 24 to 48 hours, and the patient's symptoms subsided after two weeks of immune therapy. patient. He did not come back for a follow-up. I figured the rheumatologist had him under his care and he was giving him topic, uh, systemic immune suppression. But he came back to us after two weeks. He was very happy. The inflammation was gone. The lid edema was much better. He was seeing, you know, and then he said that I did not go to the rheumatologist. He said, as soon as I started the topical immune suppression, I got so much better. Pir mariz apna doctor khud bhi hota hai. He did not even show up to showed up to the rheumatologist clinic. So in this case, he actually got better only with topical immune suppression. It did not require systemic immune suppression, retrospectively. <coughs> this brings me to my last case. 70 years old maid presented with a history of diabetes and hypertension. He had recently undergone a PRP procedure, which might be significant as we go forward with this history. A uh, known case of uh, uh, primary open angle glaucoma as well was on treated, uh, treatment, well controlled pressures, they went for cataract surgery. Post one week developed severe pain in the operated eye with redness and watering. Visual acuity in the right eye was 2400, swollen edematous lids with mechanical ptosis. And he had a patch of nodular scleritis with a necrosis of the overlying tissue close to the clear corneal incision site. Although the incision was corneal, <coughs> but severely tender. Again, no signs of intraocular inflammation, but the fundus showed treated PDRs. Now, mind you, this is after an uneventful, clean cataract surgery. This case, mein, jo mere khayal mein retrospectively mishandling with you, was that the treating surgeon first put him on low dose steroids, thinking that the melt might increase. But with autoimmune responses, you have to realize you have to bombard first and come up with the strongest sort of possible immune suppression that you can think of to halt the process. So he had actually 10 days of very low dose steroid that didn't make any difference and actually made the thing much worse. I understand the surgeon's concern that he's diabetic and he might go uncontrolled diabetic. Patient's anxiety is a very factor hota hai with this. You know, everybody right, left and center are getting better a day after cataract surgery or in ko agar ye ho jai. So the patient was very hard patient to deal with as well. He was placed on this day, this was somewhere around 15 to 20 days post, he was placed on high-dose corticosteroid therapy and referred to the rheumatologist for prompt intensive immune suppression. This time, this patient did go to the rheumatologist that I referred him to. And after looking at the severity of these symptoms, he put him on, in fact, intravenous cyclophosphamide, which is what he required to um, uh, control his uh, inflammation and his pain. So he's doing well after cyclophosphamide, but there is that patch of severe scleral thinning and you know, we're now considering him for a, for a graft. So in conclusion, you have to be wary of immune-mediated reactions. There's a case series that actually says uh, that 17% of surgically induced necrotizing scleritis occurs after uneventful cataract surgery. Of course, limbal incisions are more at risk than uh, corneal incisions. But uh, a mentor of mine, one of those very respectful uh, um, sir, uh, teachers I had, he says, treat the eye like you would treat a lady. So even though cataract surgery is a very sophisticated procedure, but before you actually touch the eye, think twice about these kind of patients that can scar you for life as a surgeon. And don't panic. Um, I had a, uh, another teacher that I can quote here where I had a PC rent once. It was during the early days of my residency and I was very depressed. And he goes, Look, vitreous is coming, so we don't take it. You have to deal with it. So my answer to me, sir, we are here, but we are here. But if you say that, then it's okay. But don't, things happen, you know? And, and learning how to deal with that is more important and own your patient. 
these patients eventually come down to respecting you a lot and honoring you a lot, even though his, his vision is now suffering irreversible loss, but he appreciates the fact that you have stayed with him and walked with him for, you know, about 12 weeks or jitna bin kalagat. So thank you very much for your patient listening. Yeah, he, 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 had, he had a history of arthritis as well, rheumatoid arthritis as well. Yeah, so what would... This is, yeah, you, you're true, and I forgot to mention, he did have a, 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 a diagnosis of arthritis, but he wasn't, it was low-grade arthritis, he wasn't on any immune suppression because of it. Uh, local factors that are higher risk for developing uh, surgically induced necrotizing scleritis are the fact that you have a limbal incision, subsada jo wo hoti hai, surgery is associated, that's pterygium surgery, followed by cataract surgery, and then the host of the other surgeries that you can possibly come to. Of the systemic risk factors, already an autoimmune response, that, uh, a disease that he has, and rheumatoid arthritis or something like that, that predisposes a patient for. So that kind of just pre-op evaluation may this ko you know nazar mein rakhna zaruri hai thank you very much any more questions from the audience so One thing i just wanted to highlight as well particularly the first case where it was a mild episcleritis and thing like that in this i think uh, the other thing we should consider and look into the point is the drug toxicity as well hmm. sometimes we are using the drugs very frequently yeah. and preservatives and their effects where there are mild, mm. and mild generalized redness that is also one of the factor which uh, you know we have to keep in mind Sir. thank you very much dr Ina. so do you want to add anything oh, okay so uh, we've got our uh, second speaker, Dr. Can I add a few things, uh, Dr. Hina, regarding the first case and the second case, I was thinking more about the toxicity and the allergic reaction. I've, I had a couple of patients who were allergic to pyodine, and they presented exactly like your second case. Uh, so that is one of the elements of the retinal uh, the corneal toxicity from the preservatives or directly to the povidone iodine. What uh, uh, tilted us more to the diagnosis of autoimmunity was the fact that the other eye was also involved. Yeah. And you know, with pyodine exposure and with preservative exposure, you expect these uh, symptoms to subside as time goes by. His gra graph was going in the other, uh, you know, direction. But I, I respect your point about yeah, uh, preservative allergies and pyodine uh, reaction. Thank you. So our next speaker is uh, Soheb Abbas from Lahore. And he'll be presenting on the role of Im immunosuppression on the UVI test. Interest in UV tick diseases. Uh, currently, I'm doing my own practice at my own hospital, uh, but I'm also a fellow of VR surgery at uh, King Edward Medical University. Uh, immunosuppression ki baat hoti hai in ophthalmology, to yo thoda sa ophthalmology liye thoda sa I wouldn't say no go area, lekin we're, we're usually very scared. We have methotrexate or But the most scary thing is the role of uh, biologics. So I want to talk about those biologics today because I have uh, developed a pool of patients which I have been taking care of uh, for the last two uh, years or so. So I wanted to share my experience with you and have a talk about how we are going to take care I'm going to start with my case. It's an interesting one. She was basically my first case back in 2018 when I came back from the U.S. and started my uveitis practice. She was my first uveitis case, so I, I remember her particularly. I know all of her family, her husband, her parents, everybody. 33-year-old female, she presented with uh, visual loss, right PL, thi, left counting finger, thi, pan uveitis or vasculitis was going on. When we had an extensive autoimmune profile, which was incomplete, thi, uh, like most of the patients, there was an autoimmune component tha uska, hepatitis or biliary cirrhosis wala problem and later the synovial inflammation also started. Uh, she had undergone multiple injections, supracroidals, I had also given oral steroids, we had a vitrectomy in her eye, cataract extraction was uh, done in both eyes. Eventually she was started on mycophenolate, we had 
वन ग्राम बी डी पे यानी टू ग्राम टोटल डोज पर डे स्टार्ट किया इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड शी वॉज डूइंग ग्रेट शी हैड वन आई लेफ्ट और वो ट्वेंटी एटी पे स्टेबल चल रही थी और इस सब इन सब ड्यूरेशन में टिल टूडे देर है ओनली बी इन वन फ्लेयर वो भी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू के शुरू में प्रॉब्ली जैन फेब में था और वो भी हमने विदाउट इंक्रीजिंग द डोज या कुछ और एड uh, करने की बजाय वी जस्ट गेव हर सुपरा क्रॉयडल स्टेरॉयड एंड एंड शी बिकेम एब्सोलूटली फाइन सर माइक्रोफिनोलेट माइक्रोफिनोलेट जो सर इम्यूनो सप्रेशन के लिए यूज होती है ये मेथोट्रेक्साइड की बड़ी सर 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 इम्यूनो मॉडुलेशन थेरेपी के अंदर सर ये यूज होती है सॉरी मैंने एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर सकता सर बेसिकली देर इट्स द सेम फॉर एग्जाम्पल फाइव एम जी स्टीरॉयड औरल लें तो वो आप समझ लें कि वो इम्यूनो सप्रेशन नहीं करती एंटा इन्फ्लेमेटरी डोज है सेवन टू फाइव टेन एम जी तो वो तब जाके इम्यूनो सप्रेशन करेगी तो जब भी इम्यूनो सप्रेशन होगी तो आप इम्यूनो मॉडुलेशन तो कर ही रहे हैं यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल कि आपने इम्यूनिटी इतनी तो नहीं नीचे कर दी या आपने उसको कैसे लेके चलना है तो इट्स इट्स बेसिकली द सेम थिंग यू आर नॉट हाइपर एक्टिवेटिंग द इम्यून सिस्टम इट्स ऑलरेडी एक्टिवेटेड तो इम्यूनो सप्रेशन बेसिकली मीन्स इम्यूनो मॉडुलेशन इट्स इट्स वन एंड द सेम थिंग शी वॉज अंडर गोइंग रूटीन चेकअप रोमोटोलॉजिस्ट और अनफॉर्चुनेटली पहले उसका हैप भी Uh, उसने ट्रीटमेंट ली थी शी वॉज पॉजिटिव फॉर दैट बट शी बिकेम नेगेटिव और क्वान्टिफ्रेन गोल्ड भी उसका नेगेटिव था उस वक्त सडनली उसका क्वान्टिफ्रेन गोल्ड भी पॉजिटिव हो गया और हैप्पी भी उसको हो गया बिकॉज ऑफ थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ माइक्रोफिनोलेट थेरेपी थ्री ईयर्स इम्यूनो सप्रेशन थेरेपी अब ऑल दो देर इज नो इन्फ्लेमेशन इन दी आई शी इज डूइंग ग्रेट बट वी के नॉट गिव अर दिस मेडिसिन एनी मोर सो वी हैव टू स्विच हर टू बायोलॉजिक्स बिकॉज शी इज़ अ यंग फीमेल थर्टी फाइव नाव शी हेज़ थ्री केड शी हेज़ टू टेक केयर ऑफ हर फैमिली सो दैट्स वाई जहाँ पर जाके मुझे लगा था कि दिस इज दिस दैट्स जस्ट समथिंग जो कि मोर ऑफ हर शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ दिस थिंग बायोलॉजिक्स बेसिकली देर बायोलॉजिक रिस्पॉन्स मॉडिफायर्स इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स में जो मीडिएटर्स निकलते हैं साइटोकाइंस वगैरह उन्होंने आगे जाकर जहाँ पर एक्शन करना है तो वी आर गिविंग द पेशेंट प्रोटीन्स जो वो उनके एक्शन को ब्लॉक कर देगी दे आर बेसिकली रिकॉम्बिनेट एंटाबॉडीज एंड एंटाबॉडी डिराइव प्रोटीन्स यूजली ये जितनी भी प्रोटीन्स होती हैं उनको मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडीज कहते हैं और इनके नाम के आगे हम एम ए बी लगाते हैं ठीक है जैसे इनफ्लिक्सी मैप डेली में मैप अगर इट्स अ ह्यूमन एंटाबॉडी तो इट्स जस्ट कॉल्ड ओ मैप डेली में मैप ह्यूमेरा के नाम से आती है इफ इट इज अ कामेरिक एंटीबॉडी यानी ह्यूमन के साथ और भी कोई पोर्शन है दैट इज माइस फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो वी एड जी मैप विद एट इनफ्लिक्सी मैप एंड देन अगर फ्यूजन प्रोटीन है वेर आर वेरी वेल अवेयर ऑफ दिस सेप्ट लगता है हम एफ्री बर्ड सेप्ट यूज़ करते हैं आइलिया वी ऑल नो तो ये उनके नेमिंग मतलब है कि नॉमन क्लेचर इस तरह डिवाइज होता है ये ड्रग डेवलपमेंट हुई है बहुत ज़्यादा पिछले थर्टी फोर्टी ईयर्स में ऑनकोलॉजी और ऑटोम्यून डिजीज में सबसे ज़्यादा ड्रग्स डेवलप की गई हैं इन द लास्ट थ्री और फोर डेकेट्स वेन शुड वी यूज़ दीज मेडिसिन इन यू वी आइटस पेशेंट्स वैन इम्यूनो सप्रेशन हैज़ फेल्ड या पेशेंट टॉलरेट नहीं कर सकते बहुत सारे पेशेंट्स होते हैं उन्हें जी आई इशूज़ इतने ज़्यादा होते हैं कि दे क्या टेक अगर सब क्यूटेनियस मेथोट्रिकसेड भी बच्चों को लग रहा हो तो वो भी कहते हैं कि जी नहीं हमसे नहीं होता वो दो दिन तो पेशेंट उठता ही नहीं है तो दैट्स वाई मेथोट्रिकसेड की वीकली डोज होती है वी गिव दैम ऑन सैटरडे और संडे या फिर जो पेरीफ्री से पेशेंट्स आते हैं उनका फ्राइडे यूजली ऑफ होता है तो उनको मैं फ्राइडे को देता हूँ ताकि वो एक दिन वो बस सिर्फ बेड पर लेते रहें एनी और वेन दे आर नॉट टॉलरेटिंग इट वेल वी पुट दैम ऑन ऑन बायोलॉजिक या फिर ऐसी कोई सिस्टामिक डिजीज़ है पेशेंट को कि जिसको हम दें ऑटोम्यून डिजीज़ है कि इफ़ यू पुट द पेशेंट ऑन दैट तो उसकी यूवीआईटस भी इम्प्रूव करेगा लॉन्ग टर्म सेफ्टी डेट ऑब्वियसली नहीं है बहुत सारी चीज़ों की तरह और फर्स्ट थेरेपी इट्स नॉट आर फर्स्ट चॉइस बट इन सम डिजीजेज हम इसको शुरू में ही स्टार्ट करते हैं खासतौर पर पेशेंट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पेशेंट्स के बहुत सारे पेशेंट्स हैं मेरे पास जो कि दे हैव लॉस्ट वन आई सेकेंड आई हैंड मूवमेंट टाउंटिंग फिंगर मैक्सिमम तो वो चूंकि टाइम पे नहीं स्टार्ट हो सकी उनकी इम्यूनोसप्रेशन प्रोमोटाइड एंड स्पॉन्ट जो आई इन सब के अंदर वी कैन स्टार्ट दीज बायोलॉजिक्स अर्ली ऑन ये ड्रग डेवलपमेंट हो रही है मोर देन सेवेंटी ये भी लिस्ट मेरे पास थोड़ी है ऑलमोस्ट सेवेंटी प्लस एटी हैं जो कि इस वक्त डेवलप हो रहे हैं एफ डी ने अप्रूव कर दी अराउंड ट्वेंटी प्लस बाकी दे आर इन द पाइप लाइन एंड दे वुड डेवलप सून डिफरेंट क्लासेज हैं इसके अंदर इफ वी सी एयर एफ डी अप्रूव बायोलॉजिक्स में Uh, जो टी एन एफ एल्फा इनिबेटर्स हैं वो सबसे कॉमनली यूज़ हो रहे हैं सारी सिस्टमिक इंडिकेशन हैं सबसे ज़्यादा यूज़ हो रहे हैं लिफोसाइट इनि
easily available, they, they do great for, for UV itis. Aptinif alpha care, this is uh, an actual diagrammatic representation. Uh, it's a master cy cytokine. It's, it's just everywhere. Jahan inflammation ogina is just going to wreak havoc. And it is uh, synthesized by most immune cells and, and, and many non-immune cells as well. Uh, These receptor types are uveitic eye may aqueous may be hota hai or blood may be it's there so we if, if we target this then we can control the uveitis i'm going to talk about infliximab and dalimumab inka use jo hai wo off label hai fda approved nahi hai just like uh, avastin wo us mein bhi lag raha hai wahan par bhi to usme uh, hum hum kya karte hain ki hum rheumatology ki help lete hain yahan par to chale hame nahi hai udhar jis tarah us mein patients ya uk mein वो क्या होता है कि रूमटोलॉजिस्ट को इन्वॉल्व करते हैं थोड़ी सी भी जॉइंट पे मैं उससे कहते हैं कि अच्छा यार डोज दे दो इसको क्योंकि वो फिर जो इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज हैं उनके पास इट्स इट्स नॉट लिस्टेड तो द पेशेंट इज नॉट गोना गेट दिस मेडिसिन पाकिस्तान में भी इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट आई आई मीन यू कैन नॉट प्रैक्टिस दिस विदाउट हैविंग अ गुड रूमाटोलॉजी ग्रुप विद यू अब अल्लाह का शुक्र है आई हैव बीन ब्लेस्ड मैंने एफ एम मेमोरियल से किया था एम तो मेरे सीनियर्स थे डॉक्टर नगत मीर और डॉक्टर अहमद सीद ये पीपल इन लाहौर नो दैम उनका बहुत बड़ा रोमेटोलॉजी का ग्रुप है तो आई एम वर्किंग इन कलेबरेशन विद दैम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इन फ्लेक्सी मैप इट वॉज अप्रूवड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी एट फॉर क्रोन्स डिजीज इट इज कैमेरिक यानी जो कॉन्स्टेंट पोर्शन है वो ह्यूमन बेस्ड है और जो वेरिएबल पोर्शन है दैट इज डिराइव फ्राम माइस और दिस इज दिस इज द मेन एंटा टी एन एफ थिंग इट बाइंड स्पोर्ट सर्कुलेटिंग मेमरिंग बाउंड टी एन एफ Uh, इसकी हाफ लाइफ इज एट टू टेन डेज इसकी डोजेज मैं अभी डिस्कस करता हूँ आगे नेक्स्ट एंड दिस इज गिवन इंट्राव एज आई वी इन्फ्यूजन और पेशेंट को शॉर्ट स्टे करना पड़ता है और आई वी इन्फ्यूजन देते हैं टू हंड्रेड या फाइव हंड्रेड एम एल के अंदर सबसे पहले बेशट्स के बारे में बात करेंगे बेशट्स में देर लॉट ऑफ डेटा बहुत मैं डिटेल में नहीं जाऊँगा लेकिन जिन बेशट्स के पेशेंट्स में इन्फ्लिक्सी में आप शुरू में स्टार्ट की गई है तो वो एक वीक के अंदर भी उन्होंने कहा कि यार वी आर डूइंग ग्रेट और मतलब है कि बेशट्स इतना अच्छा रिस्पांस नहीं देता इवन स्टीरॉयड्स uh, को भी और इस इस स्टडी के अंदर बेशट जो पहली दफ़ा प्रेजेंट कर, कर रहा था उसको सिंगल इन्फ्लिक्सी में इन्फ्यूजन दिया गया पल्स थेरेपी दी गई वन ग्राम फॉर थ्री डेज और इंट्राविट्रल ट्राइम्सोन लगाया गया तो द पेशेंट विद इन्फ्लिक्सी में आप वो ग्रुप दे डिट एक्सेप्शनली वेल कम्पेयर टू दी अदर टू सो वी कैन सेफली से बेशट्स में हम ये शुरू में दे सकते हैं जी आई ए के बहुत सारे पेशेंट्स हैं जिनको ये चल रहा है आई पी टी एंक्स फॉर्म सोराइसिस वी के एच इनकी मैं डिटेल में नहीं जाऊँगा ऑबियसली सार्कोडोसिस मल्टाफकुल कोरोडाइटस पेंजुवीआईटस बी ट्वेंटी सेवन पार्सप्लेनाइटस एडियोपैथिक जो नहीं कहीं पर और आ, हो रहा है जिसकी यानी सिर्फ ऑकुलर डिजीज़ है तो रोमाटोलॉजी के साथ इसमें आपको उनको करना पड़ेगा कि क्योंकि देर इज़ नो सिस्टमिक इन्वॉलमेंट मैकुलर एडिमा जो रेजिस्टेंट होता है इफ दैट्स नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग तो हम इसका टू टू थ्री मंथ्स का दे सकते हैं इंटरेस्टिंगली आई हैव अ पेशेंट वो बलोचिस्तान से आते हैं बहुत दूर से उनको ही प्रॉब्लम है वो इन्फ्लिक्सी मैप पे हैं लेकिन साल में एक आध दफ़ा उनको आउट ऑफ नो वेयर मैकुलर एडिमा डेवलप हो जाता है तो वो फिर हम उनको पेटीजरा और एक सुपरा प्रोडक्ट लगाते हैं तो वो इट गेट्स बेटर इंस्टेड ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग इन्फ्लिक्सी मैप डॉज सेकेंडली इज डेली में मैप ये हमेरा के नाम से आती है ये सब कट लगती है हैफ लाइफ इज फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी डेज जिसने डेवलप की थी डॉक्टर ग्रेग विंटर उनको नोबेल प्राइज भी मिला था फॉर दिस इसकी थेरापूटिक रेंज कम है कम्पेयर टू इन्फ्लिक्सी मैप लेकिन ये थोड़ी सी सेफ है यूज़ करने में सो वी यूजली स्टार्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स विद अटेली में मैप एक दूसरा ये कि जो इन्फ्लिक्सी मैप है उसके अगेंस्ट एंटाबॉडीज़ बन जाती हैं तो इन्फ्लिक्सी में आपके साथ हमें मेथोट्रेक्सेट या सेल्सअप देनी पड़ती है ताकि एंटाबॉडीज ना डेवलप हों द गुड थिंग ये जो अवेलेबल है ये ये स्मगल होता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली यूरोप से ह्यूमेरा आ रहा था पहले इंडिया से आता था फिर दुबई से फिर टर्किश आना शुरू हो गया अब वो बिल्कुल बंद हो गया ये ईरान से स्मगल होकर आता है तो ये मतलब है कि अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारे पास ये मेडिसिन नहीं है यहाँ पर यह कराची से हमें मंगवानी पड़ती हैं प्लस जो इन्फ्लिक्सी में है वो रिसेंटली अ फ्यू मंथ्स बैक वो सब कट भी आना शुरू हो गया सो दिस इज ग्रेट तो वी कैन जस्ट परफॉर्म एट इन द क्लिनिक एज वेल विदाउट नीडिंग टू एडमिट द पेशेंट्स ये उनकी डोजेज है इन्फ्लिक्सी में uh, की लोडिंग डोज होती है पर के जी के हिसाब से चलती है वन टू फोर जीरो टू फोर सिक्स और उसके पास मेनटेन करते हैं बेसिकली दोनों में हम लोगों ने शुरू में वन टू फोर वीक्स पर स्टार्ट करते हैं 
फोर वीक्स के बाद आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स अगर कंट्रोल सही है तो वी कैन शिफ्ट द पेशेंट टू आफ्टर एवरी सिक्सटी डेज क्योंकि दिस इज एक्सपेंसिव ये दो इंजेक्शन दे कॉस्ट अराउंड फिफ्टी टू सेवेंटी थाउजेंड सो वी हैव टू वेरी ऑफ दिस एज वेल एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स इन्फेक्शन न्यूट्रोपीनिया ऑटो इम्यूनिटी ए एन ए पॉजिटिव हो जाते हैं पेशेंट्स जिनको हम ये मेडिसिन देते हैं डिमाइलिनेटिंग डिजीज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो वेन एवर वी वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट पेशेंट्स ऑन बायोलॉजिक्स वी ऑलवेज स्क्रीन फॉर टी वी हैव बी सी एंड एच आई वी एच आई वी से मुझे याद आया सॉरी ये ऑफ टॉपिक थोड़ी सी हो जाएगी बात लास्ट वीक आई गॉट अ पेशेंट फ्राम कराची उजमा उसको डील करी थी वो शी हैड लूपस और वो बहुत अरसे से इम्यूनो सप्रेशन पर थी कई बार उस बेचारी का प्रोसीजर हुआ उसकी बिकेम एच आई वी पॉजिटिव तो अभी उसको सी एम वी रेटनाइटस मतलब इट्स फुल ब्लॉन मैंने थर्सडे को भी गैन साइक्लोवीर इंट्राविट्रल दोनों आइज में लगाया कल उसका के जी दोबारा प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है मुझे तो uh, मतलब इम्यूनो सप्रेशन की वजह से ये वाले इन्फेक्शन भी हो सकते हैं अंडरलाइंग मेलेग्नेंसी या ऑटोम्यून डिजीज ना हो पेशेंट को एंड द पेशेंट शुड बी अप टू डेट ऑन ऑल द वैक्सीनेशन ये स्पेशल कंसिड्रेशन है वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड ऑल ऑफ दीज आई जस्ट टोल्ड के सेकेंड इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव देनी होती है क्योंकि एंटीबॉडीज बन जाती हैं लाइव वैक्सीन हमने नहीं देनी और मॉनिटरिंग इनकी जो है ना वो बहुत मेटिकुलस हमें करनी पड़ती है कुछ तो रिकमेंड करते हैं कि इनफ्लिक्सी में आपके हर इन्फ्यूजन के बाद आप ए एन ए एंटीबॉडी ज़रूर करवाएं एंटी न्यूक्लियर एंटीबॉडी प्रेगनेंसी दिस इज़ अ सीरियस इशू आई हैव अ पेशेंट वी के एच की थी वो अनफॉर्चुनेटली शी गॉड डिवोर्स बिकॉज शी वॉज ऑन इम्यूनो सर्वेशन एंड शी कुड नॉट कंसीव उनमें मना किया गया था तो उसके बाद जब दोबारा वो शी गॉड मैरिड अगेन मेरे पास ये कहती भाई मैंने तो प्रेगनेंट होना ही उन्हें ख़त्म बात आई डोंट केयर वन आई थी उसकी तो फिर उसको फिर हमने इन फ्लिक्सी मैप पर शिफ्ट किया लेकिन मैथोट्रेक्सेट और इनकी प्रोफाइल इन प्रेगनेंसी इज़ नॉट नॉट वेरी वेरी सेफ साइक्लोस्पोरिन हम किसी हद तक दे सकते हैं ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग वाले पेशेंट्स को भी लेकिन हम सेफली वी कैन स्टार्ट दीज ऑन वेमेन हु आर बेसिकली एक्सपेक्टिंग मदर्स और वो वॉन्ट टू कंसीव दिस इज जस्ट द डेट ऑफ ऑल द पेशेंट दैट टाइम सीन्स पेशेंट्स के काफ़ी ज़्यादा हैं उनको साथ कनकॉमिटेंट इम्यूनो सप्रेशन चाहिए होती है इनफ्लिक्सी मैक के साथ सेल्सैप्ट वो हमें देनी पड़ती है ऐसे पेशेंट्स को और वी के एच के साथ भी चाहिए होती है जी आई एम ये होता है कि हम लो डोज मेथोट्रेक्सेट बहुत सारे बच्चे हैं लो डोज मेथोट्रेक्सेट और डेली वी मैप अगर हम पेशेंट्स को देते रहे तो दे डू रियली वेल कभी कभी फ्लेयर आ जाता है तो ओ डी में प्रेड फोटे आप दे दें तो दे डू दे डू जस्ट फाइन बी बी ट्वेंटी सेवन का यूवीआईटस इतना सवेर नहीं होता लेकिन उनकी चूँकि सिस्टेमिक डिजीज़ ज़्यादा होती है तो वो उसकी डोज में ही ये यूजली कवर हो जाती है और अगर कभी कोई फ्लेयर आता है तो आप टॉपिकल स्टीरोड से वो कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं इसी तरह ऐसे पेशेंट्स में जब कोई फ्लेयर आता है मैकुलर डीमा या इंटरमीडिएट यूवीआईटस तो हम लोग ऐसे पेशेंट्स को सुपरा क्रोडल लगा देते हैं ताकि वो दे अगेन क्वाइट फॉर सिक्स एट ट्वेल्व मंथ्स वेस्कुलाइटस के अंदर इफ़ यू डू लेजर ऑगमेंटेशन तो दिस इज माई एक्सपीरियंस डेटा इनफ्लिक्सी मैप विद लेजर का कोई नहीं इस वक्त मौजूद कि हम लोग बायोलॉजिक्स या लेजर का क्या लेकिन उसे इट इट डेफिनेटली हेल्प हाफ ऑफ दीज पेशेंट्स इनको मैंने स्टार्ट करवाई है एंड दी अदर नॉट हैव फोर्टी परसेंट वो ऐसे पेशेंट्स हैं जो कि ऑलरेडी उनको ऑकुलर प्रॉब्लम्स थे और रूमाटोलॉजी ग्रुप उनको देख रहा था और वो वहाँ से फिर मेरे पास तो देन दे केम अंडर माई केयर दिस इज डॉक्टर ग्रेगरी विंटर बेसिकली इन्होंने बायोलॉजिक्स uh, uh, जो हैं आई वुड से डेवलप किए थे लैब के अंदर फॉर दैट ही गॉट द नोबेल प्राइज और उन्होंने स्प्लिन सेल्स माइस से लेके माइलोमा सेल्स के साथ मिलाया और दे डिड समथिंग आई डोंट नो मुझे इतनी अच्छी इम्यूनोलॉजी नहीं आती बट आई जस्ट फाउंड इट टू बी इंटरेस्टिंग कि स्प्लिन सेल और माइलोमा सेल्स को मिला के दे हार्वेस्टेड मोनोक्लोनल एंटाबॉडीज और दिस इज लाइफ सेविंग यू के नहीं अगर आप वैसे देखें तो uh, और बहुत सारी ऑटो इम्यून डिजीजेज के अंदर दे दे हेल्प द पेशेंट आप महीने में एक या दो इंजेक्शन लग रहे हैं एंड दे आर डूइंग फाइन विद देयर लाइफ थैंक यू एनी क्वेश्चन यू वी आई टेस्ट पेशेंट्स वॉट आई स्ट्रगल इज द टाइम इन पेशेंट्स को इतना टाइम देना पड़ता एंड बेसिकली पेशेंट की अंडरस्टैंडिंग डेवलप करने के लिए ना इतनी एफर्ट करनी पड़ती है जो कि टाइम क्लिनिक्स के अंदर देना बड़ा मुश्किल होता है Secondly, जितने भी biologics हैं have you noticed के different manufacturers और different uh, जगह से जो uh, smuggle हो रहे हैं I found के उनकी efficacy is very different. Um, sir, have you noticed this? Sir, I have not. I have been lost in the technology group. Like, it definitely, oh, this is cold chain maintain, or if we don't really know, 
थैंक यू वेरी मच आवर लास्ट स्पीकर ऑफ द सेशन इज डॉक्टर आयशा कोसर Would you like to come and present your your talk? And today the topic of my presentation is ophthalmic ophthalmic manifestations and optic nerve functions in uh, COVID-19 patients. Um, this is an ongoing prospective case series with uh, an approved research grant from Shifata Mira Millat University. Uh, as we all know that covid-19 was first seen in china during december 2019 later on it became a global pandemic and during the initial phases of the disease because of the respiratory complications which were potentially fatal limited data was available regarding ocular and neuro ophthalmological manifestations so this study was conducted with the objectives to identify the ocular signs and symptoms in covid-19 patients and to investigate optic nerve functions in covid-19 patients uh, basically we had in our mind like um, many patients of the covid they present with anosmia and that later on improves and there were patients with covid who were complaining that of something vision fog or brain fog like thing so we had that thing in our mind to uh, investigate the optic nerve functions in detail um so we included adult patients uh, 16 to 60 years of age who were uh, previously labeled positive for covid and they were stable now uh, patients were excluded if they had any previously diagnosed uh, ocular disease that was affecting ocular surface retina or optic nerve um the study was started after approval by IRB and EC and was conducted at ophthalmology department of shifa international hospital and uh, shifa foundation falahi clinic um and we used a non probability sampling technique we did a detailed uh, entian posterior segment examination with slit lamp and optic nerve functions were evaluated we did the snellens visual acuity and refraction if required light brightness appreciation contrast sensitivity by pelirropsin chart uh pupillary reflexes were uh, examined color vision was checked with hrr plates and uh, humphrey visual field 24-2 analysis was done patients with positive findings or visual field defects were re-examined at 3 months interval whenever possible um this is what the hardy rand retinal uh, uh, plates they look like the pelirropsin chart So the results uh, data was analyzed in SPSS version 23. So, uh, mean age of the population was 31.26 years. Mean interval between COVID diagnosis and ocular examination was 4.19 plus minus two weeks. So far, we have enrolled 50 patients, and 42% of them were males. Majority of our patients, that's 41 patients, they had mild symptoms and they were managed at home. five patients had moderate disease and were managed by uh, teleconsultations or uh, opd during the phase of the disease and four patients had active uh, uh, had severe uh, symptoms and were uh, hospitalized uh, ocular complaints were present in 34% of these patients the most common uh, complaint as we can see is uh, the blurred vision which was followed by redness eye pain diplopia burning watering dry and itchy eyes and visual field defects on optic nerve function examination 97% patients had 66 visual acuity 17% had disc chromatopsia light brightness appreciation was reduced in 4% uh, however the uh, contrast sensitivity and pupillary reactions they were normal and on field analysis out of 100 eyes of 50 patients 29 had some detectable field defects the mm, type of field defects were paracentral ring scotoma general reduction of sensitivity superior and inferior arcuate defects and 15 per patients 15 eyes had non specific subtle changes um in this patient uh, she was a 22 year old female 
and she was examined at four weeks post-COVID. And as we can see that she had general reduction of sensitivity of her fields. Uh, on examination, she had subconjunctival hemorrhages even at four weeks post-COVID. She had hyperemic disc. However, the vision, color, vision, and contrast were normal. At three weeks, uh, three months follow-up, the uh, the patient's visual field completely improved, and she had normal fields at that time. This is another patient. She was a 48-year-old female. She had a very mild disease, and fields were done at three weeks post-COVID. Her vision, color, and contrast, and disc examination were normal, and she had this small scotoma. This also improved on follow-up field. Um, this was an interesting field for us. This patient was 53-year-old male who had history of ischemic heart disease. And during COVID, he had severe respiratory symptoms and was hospital hospitalized as well. Uh, fields were done at seven weeks post-COVID. The patient was complaining of field defect, actually. He was saying, sometimes I, I miss something or something suddenly bothers me in the field. On examination, he had hyperemic disc. Surprisingly, the visual equity in the affected eye was normal. The other eye uh, had normal disc and normal vision as well. But the color vision was reduced, and he could read 18 out of the 20 plates. And this patient did not turn up for follow-up. We tried to conduct him, uh, contact him many times, uh, but uh, he did not turn up. But on phone, he said that the vision, his, his symptoms have improved. Um, Another patient, 26-year-old male, uh, this is the field at four uh, weeks post-COVID. He also had hyperemic disc, and we can see that he had an inferior arcuate-like thing. Uh, I'd like to clear here that we did these fields without mask, so the, the effect of mask on the inferior field uh, cannot be uh, effective for this. He had also decreased vision, 19 out of 20 plates. Another patient, again, mild respiratory symptoms, 21-year-old male, and uh, fields were done at eight weeks post-COVID. He also had hyperemic disc, and the field were something like bi-nasal uh, defect, non-congruous. Um, this is the last patient. Uh, th she's a 31-year-old female. This was her second attack of COVID. And uh, again, she had mild respiratory symptoms, fever, and headache was the main uh, problem. Fields were done at 10 weeks post-COVID. She had hyperemic disc. For this patient, we were able to do um, OCT of the retinal nerve fiber, and we can see that she had nasal disc edema. The visual equity of this patient was surprisingly gain 6-6. Um, we um, referred the patient to neurologist and they uh, requested for a uh, VEP, which turned out to be normal, and they decided to just keep the patient on observation. For this patient, we have repeated the OCT of the disc at three months, and the findings were almost similar, but her feeling of that foggy thing has improved. Um, we do not have the fields available at three months follow-up. So the uh, various pathological mechanisms have been postulated in literature. Uh, which can account for the optic nerve or neurological problems, neuroophthalmic problems in COVID-19 patients. This may be a post-viral or post-vaccine inflammatory syndrome. Uh, this may be a sequel of pro-inflammatory st uh, state or hypercoagible uh, cytokine syndrome with added uh, systemic factors of hypertension and hypoxia. Um, direct viral invasion of the nerve has been postulated, but a relatively a rare uh, manifestation. And ischemia of the retinal capillary plexus, acute macular neuro, ne neuroretinopathy can be a mechanism. This patient ka paracentral scotoma, humne dekha, and that patient, that could be a, a mechanism. But we do not have the OCT available. Various receptors that have been postulated, the uh, most important ACE2 receptors, and they are being expressed in non-vascular neuroretinal cells uh, as well, including retinal ganglion cells, inner, inner plexiform, nuclear, and photoreceptor. And uh, temporis and other receptors have been postulated in the pathogenesis. Um, so the COVID patients, they can develop atypical and transient optic nerve uh, dysfunction. The neuroophthalmological symptoms, they vary and they span throughout the recovery phase. And usually the field effects that were um, uh, reported by the patient during the recovery phase uh, of the systemic disease. 
posterior segment involvement is usually seen from week 1 to week 4 in the post viral um, cases and there are um, isolated case reports of field effects are available in the literature. So uh, we can conclude um, so far that the COVID-19 can cause ocular problems and atypical optic nerve dysfunction. Many of these signs are reversible luckily. Uh, optic nerve fibers connecting cones of color vision are affected predominantly as compared to rods and contrast sensitivity. This is our observation from this study because none of the patient had contrast problem but few of them had like 17% had um, a dyschromatopsia. Uh, ocular complication can arise even with mild form of the systemic disease and in vaccinated patients. All of our patients were vaccinated. Uh, uh, few limitations that follow up data is not available for all the patients and OCT analysis was available for only two patients but both of them had the nerve fiber layer edema at the disc. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? All these patients uh, with uh, COVID patients with the patients, they self-resolve all the immunosuppression is required? Uh, immunosuppression was not started. They were just on like uh, multivitamins that are usually given as a part of the COVID treatment. Even the last patient that I've shown you for which we took the neurological consultation, they did not start her on any steroids or uh, any other thing. Follow up is important to see whether they are reversible or irreversible changes at development. Yes, yes. So for uh, for like three or four patients are there, like the first one that I've shown you, that the fields complete resol resolved at three months. And few of them we are following. Um, in the meanwhile, our visual field machine was out of order, so we are expecting to get the fields repeated in something. But as I've told you, the last case, she did have the edema at three months follow up. Thank you. Can I ask you, in, in patients, can MRI scan kiya tha uh, MRI scan kiya tha. Because of the, uh, the, the one we refer to the neurology, they even did not uh, decide it for the MRI scan. We have one patient uh, who had the nerve edema and she had the MRI scan, mm -hmm. but uh, that was completely normal. Probably a reason can be we, we took those patients who could perform the field as well. So they were a little selected pool of the patients. COVID-infected patients came that they had a multiple brain plaques yes. uh, which has been presented, so that's why I'm asking. Or kisi patient ka apne, you mentioned AMN. Yes. Uh, did you actually do any OCTAs or anything oh, to figure that, out or OC? Uh, or was that, that was in the early phase of the disease when we, and that was the patient just for follow-up Kelly, we have tried contacting him, even offered him a transport, but he did not turn up for follow-up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any, anything to add from your side? Thank you, sir. Sir, we've got some time, so do you mind if I have a, uh, some discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, Dr. Hanan uh, from Rawalpindi, Dr. Hina B. Rawalpindi. Se hai. Uh, achha, I think she's busy at the moment. How is this? Sir. Any anyone has any experience of using this uh, in thyroid-related ophthalmopathy? The use of tepro. Tepro. Kisi ne matlab iska koi experience hai tepro? Tepro. Any experience of, of, of this immunosuppressant or in biologic? Dr. Shweer, question aapke liye. Can you ask your question again, please? My question is that uh, do you have any experience here? Any experience related to uh, the use of TEPRO, which is a biologic, especially uh, it's recently approved by the FDA for thyroid related ophthalmopathy, TRO here? They're usually a patient oculoplastics, mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll be doing the IV methyl uh, immunosuppression most likely. So I don't have any experience with this. Yeah. I think it falls under the domain of the more than of the 
Sohib, your experience was to, to liaise with the rheumatologist. My experience was that I really had to work hard to understand the eye disease. This is what the pathology is. Some of the diseases, you, they, uh, these patients need the very early immunosuppression. Uh, steroids, ke saath, dusre, jo biologics, etc. So how, how was your experience dealing with the rheumatologist? Exactly. Hanan, uh, what's your experience? I got a few from Shogat Khanam. Mycophenolate, the one of the good thing is that it kicks in very quick as compared to the MTX. That's a very good point. On the other side, the issue we get is the price. The price is so expensive as compared to the MTX. So, it's cheap. Yes. Uh, cell septic, your first case which you were presenting, you, one, uh, I think there was a margin to increase the cell sept from 1 gram BD to 2 gram BD or 1500 BD, rather jumping on to the biologics. Uh, sir, 2 gram is, uh, 8 gram is the maximum dose. Yes. And 1 gram is about 1 gram. We had a few patients on 1500 as well. Not everybody has their own different experiences. Exactly. Dr. what we were trying to discuss was the experience with the rheumatologist. Aapka, how was your experience? Your mic on. On it. 
in my article. So I think it is very, very important to include a rheumatologist in the study, uh, in your, whatever your management is. If you ask a rheumatologist, then why do you have a very weak immune suppression? So they don't really pay a lot of heed if you've already put, in the, put the patient on mycofen or even for that matter, I've had good results with using as a thiopim and using it uh, just on my own. But anything beyond that, the personal practice for the path that mycofen, the methotrexate, the isothapurim, the they reduce, especially uh, female reproductive age group, I'll do that and I'm comfortable with it because side effect profile is less, they're safe to use, immune modulatory capacity is less, Plus, you can monitor with, you know, with your blood counts and your RFPs and LFPs. So, if there's a problem, you can use it. In the VITS, there are so many unspecified, but once you've got the rheumatologist on, on board, you can also account for that. Because these are systemic medications. There have got a lot of, uh, you know, if you have a patient who has a hair wire damage project, then you can also manually test it. The more are you qualified to do it. So, rheumatology is also this way. Most of the time, they are uh, for example, idiopathic retinal vasculitis. Uh, so he that that patient never ceases to be your own. You know, so he doesn't have any other systemic abnormality. So the rheumatologist will put him on the whichever severity of immune suppression he needs, and then he will. You have to monitor because he's blind at that. So a not only a good rheumatologist, a good friend of yours, and ideal situation would be like I have the rheumatologist only 10 minutes away from where I work. That also is a big, uh, you know, consideration for people who come from far away. So I've got patients coming to me from PG Khan or DI Khan or say, they come, and usi din unhon ne udhar bhi dikhana hota hai, dono ko dikha ke wo chale jaate hain. Bilkul us to wapis bhi aate hain mere paas follow up bhi ke ki ji udhar se ye aaya, to aap ki tarah se aaya. I think it's a very very comfortable place to. Thanks, Ekta. Uh, I think especially just like a complication but I've seen we retinitis case are present I have to you always share the responsibility as well to others a bunch of the other yeah and what Hanan bhi hai, Dr. Hina bhi hai, I work in Shifa as well. Koon se shi? Yathya Jobah. Thik hai? To is it, is tarang ke jo issues aate hai, is it possible ke hum log bhi identify one person, rheumatologist ho gaya, pulmonologist ho gaya, jisko hum refer kare, so the care is standardized. The person on the other side, he understands ke hum kya cha rahe hai, aur hume bhi samajh hai ke us bande ki kya samajh hai. So you be ITS ki ek na standardize agar ham is cheez ko bana lein which I don't know Islamabad Pindi mein ham log hain if I'm more than happy to agar is cheez ko initiate karna chahe it's just a suggestion. Immediately. Hanan, we don't get money, they get money, they are very happy to see the patient across the road. Thank you. Yes, now as a general ophthalmologist, we find these cases quite regularly in our practice and there are two, three categories in this, UVITIS. They are first cases become new cases come to us, flare cells, vitritis plus some uh, inflammation in the uvia. We start do the routine investigations and we start as usual with the corticosteroids and see the response. Some are very good, excellent, give a good loading dose and they start it and uh, then follow the patients and they recover. The other patients, they are so-so, okay, some response, milder form of the response. If suppose plus vitritis, plus four cells, they come down to plus two cells and then this stops there even with the, that loading dose and then stop there. The others, 
which are very very difficult they are totally refractory you are starting the dose with the loading dose with the corticosteroid high dose say about uh, you know that is and two milligram per kilogram body dose but still they don't respond what level do you think that uh, patient should we should uh, get the opinion we have discussed all this just a short you know thing that and you you start immunosuppression on your own methotrexate kar karwa ke aap start kar dete hain intravitreal injections ka role sir intravitreal ha नहीं नहीं इंट्रावेट्रियल स्टीरोइड्स सुप्राकोराइडर विट्राइटिस उसमें कवर होती है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू आई थिंक आई स्टैंड हैव लर्न्ड अ लॉट from uh, such illuminating talks uh, the the current practices in um, healthcare demand interprofessional collaboration as a competence i think that has been very very adequately highlighted here that you need to have a very strong liaison and a mutual relationship with your specialist friends and colleagues and this is also also a competence now to refer somebody to somebody who have you have confidence in is a competence on your part also uh, then uh, i think uh, the uh, i stand uh, also educated on that evidence based practice now is really on your fingertips and is is in the is in your hands now you just go google search and then you can act so you have to look for evidence based practice in terms of rcts and better still in terms of meta analysis and systemic uh, uh, reviews so ye humne upcoming trainees jo hai hamare agar wo baithe hue hain they have to be well versed with these terminologies now to have a better training environment uh with these words uh, i thank all the speakers uh, and wish them even better progress in their journey for excellent patient care thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you everyone